Hi, Andrew Wolf here. In this video, I'm going to talk about gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now, in order to understand the disease, you need to understand what makes up the gastroesophageal junction and what prevents what uh, prevents gastric contents from refluxing up into the esophagus. Now, obviously, the one uh, thing that everyone is aware of is the lower esophageal sphincter or the LES. The lower esophageal sphincter is a um, circumferential uh, group of smooth, smooth muscles that um, provides pressure at the lower esophageal sphincter. And it provides pressure all the time, but when a bolus comes down the esophagus, it never opens up completely, but it loosens up enough so that the peristaltic waves of the esophagus, which are quite strong, can push it through the um, the pressure of the reduced pressure of the lower esophageal sphincter. So the lower esophageal sphincter always has some tone, even even when it's relatively relaxed, it always has some tone. Now the lower esophageal sphincter is only one component of the gastroesophageal junction that prevents reflux. As you can see here, um, the stomach um, has a very steep angle and this angle here is called the angle of hiss. And having a steep angle here allows the uh, gastric smooth muscle to press up against the wall of, of the gastroesophageal junction and this makes the ga gastroesophageal junction longer, right? And if you remember, I keep coming back to Poisson's law, but um, resistance is correlates directly with length and inversely with the radius. So the radius is narrowed by this steep angle and it also makes the gastroesophageal junction longer. So that increases the pressure or resistance of the gastroesophageal junction as well. And it also makes what's called a flat valve, a one-way valve. So what can cause gastroesophageal junction? Well, in this day and age, in the United States where obesity is becoming more and more of a problem one of the major factors is here I'm going to draw a sort of line and stick drawing here we've got the esophagus coming down and we've got a morbidly obese person that has lots and lots of fat now instead of having a very steep angle of hiss this person has become very very fat and there's um, the extra fat in their abdomen is causing their stomach to be pressed up and rotated and this causes the stomach to start to lay like this. So the fundus, instead of having normally here, the fundus is, has moved down and rotated over. Right? This is normal and I'll make it a dotted line here. This is a person with morbid obesity and lots of intra-abdominal fat. So the angle of hiss is no longer an acute angle. It's not as sharp. It's increased or widened. And so that is going to decrease the pressure, the the pressure and length of the gastroesophageal junction. So morbid obesity does that. Now also if you have a stomach that, I'll draw this again, now imagine the stomach has lots and lots of muscles around it, right? But it only has a finite number of muscles. Now imagine if you stretch the stomach out. And what stretches the stomach out? Well, big fatty meals. And so if you go out and have your 
um, your Big Mac and, and uh, supersized fries, that's going to distend your stomach because it takes such a long time to digest. Your stomach is going to be very over distended. Now, if you add to that a nice supersized soft drink, it's carbonated and that distends your stomach more. What does that do? Well, the more you stretch your stomach out, the more you thin, the more thin your muscles become around your stomach and this causes um, just by the stretching it causes there to be a thinner layer of muscle here and that further decreases the pressure and then obviously the third thing that can happen is you can just have hy um, you can have just a hypotonic uh, circular muscle at the lower esophageal sphincter so that is the three major causes widening of the angle of his and that's caused by intra-abdominal fat and obesity or you can have uh, distension of the stomach which thins the gastric wall and this is usually caused by large fatty meals and soft drinks, carbonated drinks. And then the third is the hypotonic lower esophageal sphincter. So what do these three things do? Well, they allow gastric contents to regurgitate up into the esophagus. So here we have the esophagus and we've got the stomach and we've got a hypotensive LES and we've got a distended stomach and a widened angle of hiss and that's allowing gastric contents. Now gastric contents have a low pH and the esophagus, um, the, the mucosa of the stomach has protections against low pH, acidic, acidity, but the esophagus does not. The esophagus has a single thin layer of squamous epithelium and it becomes irritated by acid very, very easily. And in fact, it even can start to erode. So you end up with erosions and erosions, pain. And usually this is pretty benign. It cause, causes erosions and pain. Occasionally it can cause bleeding. Very, very rare um, that, that this is significant. It's not a significant source of GI bleed very commonly um, and very uncommonly. But it, it's happening more and more since ga gastroesophageal reflux is such a rare disease. It can lead to a Barrett's esophagus, and about 1% of the time, this Barrett's esophagus can become esophageal cancer. And I'm not going to get into all the physiology of that. It just happened, it's caused by um, chronic inflammation of the lower esophageal, uh, lower esophageal mucosa. Now, what's interesting is when we treat it, you know, the ways that we treat. Um, gastroesophageal reflux, we give proton pump inhibitors or H2 blockers. And what do these do? Well, they decrease the amount of acid in the stomach. So does it stop reflux? Absolutely not. We haven't done anything to change the angle of hiss. We haven't done anything to increase the pressure of the lower esophageal sphincter. Um, we haven't done anything to reduce the distension of the stomach. All we've done is we've reduced the amount of acid. So the reflux is still there, but because there's no acid, we have less pain and less erosions. Now, interestingly enough, it's not the acidity that causes Barrett's esophagus. So reducing the amount of acidity in the stomach, but not stopping the reflux will have no, absolutely no impact on reducing the frequency of Barrett's esophagus and esophageal cancer. That's because Barrett's esophagus and esophageal cancer are related 
not to acid, but to enzymes coming from the stomach. So non-acid reflux causes just as much Barrett's esophagus and esophageal cancer. And interestingly enough, there are many patients, there are a significant portion of patients that have symptomatic non-acid reflux. So you can give them a you can give them all the PPIs and H2 blockers in the world and they still don't respond. Okay, so that's my brief introduction to gastroesophageal reflux disease. Please take a moment to give me feedback with a thumbs up and ask any questions that you have in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'll see you in my other videos.